Hi, everybody. I'm Carrie Hi. Yates. Hi, and I'm Jan Birkins, and we are the co-authors of this book, Shifting the Balance, How to Bring the Science of Reading into the Balanced Literacy Classroom. And you know, a few months back, um, we were thinking about the interconnectedness of all of the shifts within that book and how one kind of feeds the next and that one feeds the next. And we ended up to write this little thing that's sort of a circle story, you know, um, and we originally shared it in the online class in, in kind of the summary. Um, so somebody wrote to us a few weeks ago and said, could you share a written copy of that? And so we gave it a little love, cleaned it up, and we want to share it with you today in the video and in print form if it's something that you might find fun or helpful in your corner of the world. Yes, yes. So it's a circle story, kind of like if you give a mouse a cookie. Yeah. Mary, who's reading first? Why don't you start? All right. This is called, if you take a speech to print approach. If you approach learning to read and write as a speech to print rather than as a print to speech process, mm -hmm. then you will want to start by making sure children have strong oral language. And if you are going to build children's oral language, then you will want to read aloud with lots of interaction, build knowledge in intentional ways, use rich and robust vocabulary, and give children lots of chances to engage in purposeful conversation throughout the day. And if you're building oral language as the foundation for literacy, then you'll also need to help children learn to take the whole words they are using in speech and break them down into their individual speech bits or phonemes through in intentional phonemic awareness instruction. And if children are developing phonemic awareness, then you'll also want to help them learn the special code that represents those speech bits by providing explicit and systematic phonics instruction. And if you're teaching both phonemic awareness and phonics, then you'll need to help children arrive at the critical moment of alphabetic insight. This way they can fully leverage the bi-directional relationship between phonemes and graphemes to decode or read and encode or write written language. And if children understand the alphabetic principle, having both an understanding of the code and phonemic awareness, then you'll be able to scaffold their orthographic mapping, helping them make sense of letters and sounds through alignment. And if they engage in lots of opportunities for orthographic mapping, then they'll be able to access and store words for efficient and automatic retrieval. But if they're going to decode and map enough words to become truly fluent readers, then you'll need to teach them to decode all the way through, not work around words as they encounter them in print. And if you're teaching them to decode these words, then you will want to stop prompting them to search for ways to figure out words by using context or looking at pictures. And if you're going to change your prompting, then you'll also need texts that actually set kids up for success as they practice decoding words and get their feet under them as readers. And if you're going to use simple decodable text to help beginning readers get up and going, then you will need to be even more committed to oral language development and knowledge building through read aloud, vocabulary development and classroom conversation. And if you're committed to oral language development and knowledge building as a, start, as a starting point for reading instruction, then you'll be taking a speech to print approach. There you go, friends. We hope you find this helpful or interesting or even just plain fun. We send you off with lots of love as you work to make learning to read easier for kids. Bye, everybody.